Hey guys, welcome back to Talk Story with me, Gavin Sagai. Today I have Keith Amimiya, who is running for mayor of city and county of Honolulu. Keith, thanks for joining us on the show today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Gavin. Excited to be here. <laughs> so for everyone here, tell us why you want to become mayor. I'm running for mayor because we, we need change. We need new leadership. We need a fresh perspective. Mm -hmm. And we need to restore trust in government. I'm running because I care about all of our communities. And I want to do my part to create a better future for all of us, especially our younger generations like yourself, Gavin. Mm -hmm. I've been on the campaign trail for about 10 months now. And everywhere I go, people are concerned about two things. Uh, among others. Number one, they want change. They're tired of the status quo. They don't want the same old politicians running for office mm -hmm. time and again. And they want to see new, different, fresh faces. And I hope to bring that to Honolulu Hale if I'm elected as mayor. The second issue with a lot of people, in fact, most people, uh, is the high cost of living. Um, they're very concerned about making ends meet uh, with this pandemic. People in your generation uh, in particular are concerned about finding a job. Um, I know a lot of friends, uh, my son's friends, my son just finished his sophomore year in college and he has friends a couple years ahead of him that had jobs and then lost them because of, of this COVID-19 pandemic and, and the economic crisis it's, it's created. And so I wanna improve uh, people's quality of life. I wanna lessen the burden in terms of the high cost of living. And one of those ways is to increase the construction of affordable housing on our island. We have a huge shortage of housing on Oahu and I wanna address that with my housing for all plan. Mm -hmm. And we'll get to that in a bit as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, Keith, uh, just tell us how the whole process of running for your campaign has happened for these uh, these last 10 months. I mean, that's that's quite a bit, but um, you're, you're new to the whole um, running scene. <laughs> right. So I've been involved in politics before and have helped other candidates, but I, I am a, a first time candidate and uh, I believe that's a strength uh, in that I'm, I'm not part of the establishment. Uh, I don't run for office mm -hmm. year after year or election period after election period. And I, I will bring a new, different perspective and open mind. Uh, and but in terms of running for mayor, you know, it's unique and different because I've never done it before myself as a candidate. I've supported other candidates. Uh, it's a lot of work. Um, and it, it's like in any successful team or organization, you have to surround yourself with good people. And I'm really happy with the team I have. It's a uh, it's a blend of, of uh, older people, uh, but primarily younger people. Um, Several people, you know, your age and a little older are a key part of my campaign team. And I like that. I want to bring people with new ideas who represent the younger generations because basically um, that's why I'm running. It's, it's to create a better Oahu for your generation and beyond uh, because right now there's a lot of challenges. Um, it'll take a lot of work, but I know if we work together, we can, we can fix them. Awesome. <laughs> and yes, you, you definitely believe in collaboration. So that's a lot of been a lot of the takes you've been you've been saying in um, your past debates is collaboration and the younger generation is all about, you know, collaborating, coming together, especially now in the society. So um, let's kind of go back in time a little bit. Let's talk about yourself as the executive director for Hawaii High School Athletics and um, during that furlough Friday time where you, you started your Save Our Sports campaign? Sure. So that was about 10 years ago when there was another big economic crisis. Um, the, the state government uh, was going to have a huge shortfall in revenue. And one of the areas that the state decided to cut was junior varsity sports at the public high schools across the state. And uh, as you mentioned, I was in charge of high school sports at the Hawaii High School Athletic Association at the time, and I knew that would be devastating. Um, I knew that a lot of a lot of high school uh, athletes or high school students enjoyed playing sports, um, 
it was a great physical activity, but it also, you know, taught them discipline, uh, teamwork. It required that you have a minimum grade point average and yet you, you know, be a good citizen and a good student, stay out of trouble. And it also helps uh, build a pathway to higher education if you choose to do that, whether it's a community college or a four-year college. And so uh, I knew uh, I needed to do something and so with the help of a lot of people, I started a Save Our Sports campaign statewide and through the help of the private sector, uh, through um, parents, students, um, uh, community foundations, we were able to raise uh, through a grassroots campaign about $1.8 million in, in three months time. And so we were able to save and preserve junior varsity sports uh, in the public schools for the following two years. So I was proud to be a part of that and I was happy that uh, we didn't have to eliminate sports. Mm. Cool. So let's talk about uh, the housing for all plan, which is a, a very big plan on your website. How do you think that you'll be able to execute that uh, if you were in office? Well, you mentioned the word collaboration, and this will take collaboration. It'll involve working with the city council, uh, with the, the private sector, the developers and the construction industry, and, and even state government. But my Housing for All plan seeks to address the 22,000 unit shortage on Oahu in terms of housing. Um, that's a huge amount. And it's a big reason why our housing prices are so high. Uh, on Oahu, uh, and also why we have a, a part in part a homelessness problem. And so my housing for all plan consists of three major areas. It's number one, focus all future development for uh, on Oahu residents or construction or housing for Oahu residents and not out of state residents. Number two, uh, eliminating the activities that depress the housing inventory and cause housing prices to go higher, such as illegal vacation rentals that still proliferate our island. And number three, uh, assist the, or encourage development by the private sector in the urban core uh, through support from the city like sewer and water infrastructure, the quicker processing of construction building permits uh, and other uh, ways to again, facilitate development, especially in the urban core. Rail will be a big component of this housing development because at re each rail station uh, I envision uh, transit oriented development taking place and if anyone's been to other cities with a major rail system uh, such as Japan or Singapore or Vancouver and even some of the US mainland cities every station is like a city within a city where it's a hub of activity uh, it's an opportunity to build housing at each rail station, uh, like condominiums, high-rise condominiums, restaurants, uh, grocery stores, retail, uh, which will also stimulate the economy as well. So I'm big on my housing for all plan, and I, I think it'll be key to provide more housing, lower the cost of living for uh, residents across our island. And if I can digress a little bit to vacation rentals, uh, you're, you, uh, mentioned you went to Kailua High School, so you grew up in that area. Um, uh, I'm assuming you still have family in that area, and um, that your your hometown was overrun by vacation rentals. Uh, what concerned me is it changed the character of neighborhoods, like Enchanted Lake and elsewhere, uh, where half the neighborhoods sometimes were vacation rentals, and it really impacts the character of the neighborhoods. Um, it again artificially increases the, the cost of housing in Kailua and elsewhere and just um, it, it impacts your quality of life. I, I remember about six months ago my wife and I went to Kailua on the weekend and traffic was heavy. Um, rental cars are parked all over in neighborhoods, uh, a lot of them illegally. There's tourists walking on streets, uh, biking on streets, you know, getting in the way of cars. The, the beach parking lots were full. You're, you're, uh, shopping centers were full, the restaurants, you know, don't even try to go to Boots and Kimo on the weekend because I think tour buses literally dropped off tourists 
to eat there uh, mm -hmm. on the weekend. And so, you know, it really impacted the Kailua residents' quality of life and was really unfair to them. Uh, I feel that this is not the Kailua they envisioned when they chose to live and raise their families there. And so uh, my Housing for All plan seeks to address uh, all those issues. And in terms of homelessness, I mentioned earlier, more housing means less people on the streets. But besides housing, we need to do more uh, on, the on the homelessness front or houselessness by uh, providing more uh, mental health services and drug treatment services. There's, there's people out in the streets who not only don't have money and can't afford shelter, but they're clearly not well from uh, you know, a mental health standpoint or, and or substance abuse standpoint. And we need more services to treat these people and get them off the streets. Definitely. And you know, going off of uh, what you were saying about Kailua, one one thing I always tell people is back when I was in um, I was in high school, you know my friends my friends would walk we would walk from my house twelve o'clock in the morning we would go to Zippy's and we would eat there and then we would come home maybe two o'clock in the morning after on the weekends of course but if you did that now the there's a lot of uncertainty there's a lot of diff it's a different community back in Kailua so. Um, it's dangerous. It's I mean, dangerous. It's yeah. 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 You know, and that's another concern about the homelessness problem. Um, you know, I, I feel for them, of course, but I also feel for everyday residents, so to speak, um, because um, it's changed, as you said, and, and the, the homeless are more aggressive now, mm -hmm. uh, quite frankly. And, and, you know, in some, in many instances, pro it's a safety threat safety risk um, uh, uh, having them on the street and untreated so yes uh, to your point it's it's beyond an eyesore or nuisance as some people say that they are you know I don't agree with the terms but that's what people say um, and it's now a safety risk too so we need to address the homelessness problem across our island mm -hmm. so let's talk about uh, family for a bit because your campaign is very uh, family oriented, you know, and uh, let's talk, what, what is the importance of family in your, in your campaign right now? Well, it's, it's very important because it's important that, you know, uh, I use the term family, not only your blood relative family or in your nuclear family, but you know, I, <laughs> I, my campaign team is like a family. We spend so much time with each other that it, it's, it's great that we get along. It's important that we get along and, and work together. And uh, I mentioned this in some of my previous forums and maybe oh, even on my campaign website, uh, amimiaformayor.com, that uh, when I was in high school, I was lucky to be adopted or hanaied by my best friend's family. And they were not my blood relatives, but nonetheless, they took me in as one of their own and treated me like a, a family member. And I'll always remember that. I learned a lot of values from, from, uh, that, from the Kobayashi family. I, I also uh, feel indebted to them and, and know that helping someone else in need where you expect nothing in return you know, is, is essential in, in any functioning, thriving society. That we, Especially in Hawaii where we have the Ohana spirit, the Aloha spirit, we all need to help each other and that's a big reason why I'm running for mayor to do my part to help the community and communities and, and work together with everyone to create a better OAP. Mm -hmm. All right, Keith. So we're going to go into the portion which uh, some people might be interested in. Some people might be interested in the, the last portion we just talked about. I, I was very interested in that. Um, but this is what I like to do. It's like a little bit of a, a lightning round. You know, you're in these past debates, you've had maybe a minute to talk about certain issues, um, but I'm gonna give you two minutes to answer each of these, uh, these five questions. And um, I'm gonna say the question first, and then I'll start the timer, and then um, you know, we'll go from there. <laughs> okay, great. So like I said, I'll, I'll ask the question first. So uh, first question, 
and these are questions that have been sent to me or you know they ask but they don't really know how to formulate it into a question so some of them i made into a question <laughs> okay um, but here we go so question number one if hawaii was to undergo another lockdown how do you ensure that small businesses stay afloat okay well first i would say let's try to prevent a second lockdown that would be disastrous we're we're struggling with the first lockdown we're still not fully out of the lockdown and in fact there are uh, rumblings or rumors that the governor will extend the current quarant for mandatory 14-day quarantine past August 1 and extend it at least a month to September 1. So mm -hmm. first of all, let's, let's, let's get out of this first lockdown. And how we do that, we, we need to all work together and stay together and, and um, uh, be selfless and use common sense. Let's social distance when appropriate wear masks whenever you're out in public, wash your hands um, uh, constantly. Um, you know, do we need to do all, we all need to do our part into making sure that COVID-19 doesn't spread unnecessarily throughout our communities. Uh, in terms of preventing a second lockdown or how we deal with a, a struggling economy with small businesses in particular, uh, it's my hope that the federal government provides a second stimulus package because as you may know, and a lot of your viewers may know that the federal government's unemployment benefits are scheduled to expire, I believe at this month, at the end of this month. And so people are gonna, who are struggling, we're gonna struggle even more. And so we, we hope, I hope that the federal government uh, provides uh, an additional, additional wave of stimulus money to people who are out of work. Um, and in terms of getting back to work, um, businesses in Hawaii, including hotels, need to have a proper safety plan to ensure that their workers stay st safe and free from COVID-19 risks. Time. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> have a nice sounding um, alarm too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, question number two. The community on Oahu are split over issues such as renewable energy infrastructures and recreational complexes. How do you plan on getting everybody to come into agreement on these community issues? So I, I'm lucky in that I've had experience in various fields in my career. I started off as an attorney. Uh, I was a business executive most recently, and you, as you pointed out, I was in charge of high school athletics. And when I was in charge of high school athletics across the state, I learned that it was important to collaborate, to meet and talk with people, uh, and be proactive. If I ever had a proposal or idea, I made sure I was inclusive and, and got all the key stakeholders uh, together before even making a proposal. Uh, too often in government now, it seems as though government just dictates what's going to happen and announces uh, what's uh, a development project um, uh, and moves forward with construction, basically. And that's what gets people upset. They don't feel that they had a say in, in what government is doing. And um, I'm always going to remind myself that government is is designed to work for the people, not against the people, uh, or uh, it shouldn't consider people as an impediment to pro progress. Uh, government is created for people. And so uh, one of the areas I want to focus on is to create an office of community engagement, where the sole function of people in that office is to spread out and go out into the communities across Oahu and get input on their issues and concerns. Um, and if, for example, a uh, development at Sherwood Forest is about to take place, uh, I would make sure that we get everybody's input far ahead of time and see if that's truly what the community wants. And so, again, that's what's been lacking and I need to improve on communication. <laughs> time. <laughs> 
think you just beat the clock on that one. <laughs> All right, next question. So what is more important, acting in response to the will of the people or acting in the way city officials believe is the best course of action? Well, to me, you act uh, uh, according to the will of the people. As I mentioned in my previous answer, uh, government, or at least uh, the perception of the public is that the government is not listening. Uh, the government, government is not responsive to what the people want. And so we need to fix that and, and change that mindset uh, of the people. Um, uh, an Office of Community Engagement will be very helpful uh, in that regard by, again, going out in the community and getting feedback and input from people throughout the community where a project might be planned. Uh, other areas where we can improve on getting feedback from the community is uh, COVID has shown us that we can still communicate pretty effectively without meeting in person. Uh, it's difficult for a lot of people to testify at a city council hearing, for example, where people will have to take off from work in the middle of the day, uh, have to drive into town if you don't live in town, look for parking, walk to the city council chambers, and sometimes sit for hours on end not knowing if you're going to be able to testify or not. Let's use technology to allow people to communicate and provide their input. Let's allow testimony via Zoom or let people testify, yeah, uh, via, via Zoom. Um, let's let people watch hearings, you know, remotely. Um, that is available now, but we need to make it more widespread and more accessible. Um, so that to me will be very helpful by embracing technology to get people's input. Another way is to get instant polling results about a community issue. Let's ask uh, a community uh, about Sherwood Forest, for example, and allow them to take a straw poll. That'll be a good guideline or guidepost on time. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> All right, next question. What will you do in the first 90 days if elected as mayor? Well, there's so many issues the city and the mayor needs to address uh, in his or her first 90 days. And what I would do is focus on three areas. Number one, reopening the economy. Number two, uh, build more housing. And number three, address the homelessness or houselessness problem. In terms of number one, reopening the economy, uh, we need to maintain or curb the spread of COVID-19 across Oahu. As I mentioned earlier, everyone needs to do their part and, and uh, wear a mask, uh, so be socially distant uh, and not engage in large gatherings uh, whenever possible. And third, you know, use common sense about washing your hands constantly or using hand sanitizer to minimize the spreading of COVID to other people. Uh, companies or establishments like restaurants and bars and hotels and fitness centers and the like can do their part by um, having detailed safety plans and constantly sanitizing their establishments to prevent the spread of COVID-19. In terms of housing, I mentioned that earlier, my housing for all plan, uh, I wanna execute and implement that and start construction on projects as soon as possible to uh, address the 22,000 unit shortage of housing that we have here on Oahu. And third, in terms of the homelessness problem, uh, build more housing, get more families uh, off the street, uh, and uh, provide more mental health and substance abuse treatment for those who are just not well and incapable of taking care of themselves. I also want to look at more uh, housing projects that are public-private partnerships such as Kahau Iki Village uh, near San Island, where the city, state, and the private sector built a 144-unit houseless village to house. Nice. <laughs> All right. And the last question. Uh, what is, oops, sorry about that. I was lagging a little bit. <laughs> um, what is one change 
that you would make in order for city council to be more effective? Okay. Well, I, I mentioned it a couple of times and I'll, I'll mention it um, in terms of an answer for this question, create an office of community engagement and, and get people working for the city out into communities to get feedback from everyday citizens and businesses in, in uh, all areas of the island, um, especially where a proposed development or project is, is in the works. Um, that will help not only the city administration, but the city council as well. Um, it's much better to get as much information as possible from as many stakeholders as possible. And so the Office of Community Engagement can be a big part of uh, providing the necessary information for not only the mayor, but the city council and its council members uh, to rule appropriately or accordingly. And I really believe strongly that you can't over communicate. Um, and in fact, we many times don't communicate enough most of the time. And so um, I wanna make sure that we get as much dialogue and feedback as possible, and also increase the ways that people can provide feedback, as I mentioned, primarily through the use of technology, whether it's through Zoom or Skype or FaceTime, um, we really need to, utilize and embrace technology so that people can communicate in as quickly and efficiently a manner as possible. Cool. Is that good? good. Yeah, I'm good. All right. So um, last question. I always like to ask my guests this question, but uh, we're here on Talk Story with me, Gavin Sagai. So what does Talk Story mean to you? Oh, it means what, what we're doing, just a pretty casual, informal conversation um, that's open-ended, that's two-way, it's genuine conversation between, you know, oftentimes friends, um, where we just, we get to know each other better. We get to discuss current issues of the day and, and you know, uh, try to solve the world's problems, or at least the city's <laughs> problems, um, through through you know, thoughts and comments and, and information. And so that's just, you know, local style conversation. Uh, that's another way I would, I would define, you know, talking story. And we, frankly, we don't do enough of that. Uh, again, a lot of my answers were about communication and dialogue and getting feedback from the community. Mm -hmm. uh, the mayor, as mayor, I will make sure I talk story as much as possible and not just with people on the highest levels. I, I, I want feedback from all the different levels, you know, from department heads, from council members, from business executives, but also uh, working class families. Again, I view it as my role and responsibility as mayor that I'm representing and working for the working class people, the people without a voice who don't have the time or, or uh, the wherewithal to be able to have their voice heard uh, with high level leaders. Um, I, I did that in high school sports. I did that when I was an attorney that um, it's important to um, provide a voice to people who don't have a voice. Awesome. Keith, once again, thank you for coming on this show. And how can people find out more information about you? So uh, I have a campaign website. It's amemiaformayor.com, and that contains a lot of information on, on where I stand on current, current issues, uh, my background. Uh, and so, you know, that's a good way to get to know about me. There's also ways uh, on my website that show or tell you how to communicate. You can do it via email. We have a campaign uh, phone number, but also on social media, we have... Uh, I have a personal uh, social media account on in Facebook and Instagram uh, and Twitter, and then so does my campaign. It, it's an Amemia for Mayor social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as well. And that that's another way, especially for your generation, to get information <laughs> and communicate with me. And um, I'm. I'm probably on the older end of Instagram, um, but um, I, if I am using the proper word that you can DM me um, as well, or direct message. And I actually do look at that and, and that's 
been a great way to communicate with people who have short questions, you know, quick questions to ask me on where I stand on rail or how am I going to address the homelessness or houselessness problem. So yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I try to make myself as accessible as possible. So any of those ways I just mentioned um, is a way to communicate with me and to get to know me better. Awesome. Once again, Keith, thank you for coming on the show and thank you for sharing your thoughts, your ideas, and your heart behind be, being the next mayor of uh, Honolulu. <laughs> Good luck All to right. you. All right. Well, hey, thank you, uh, Gavin. It's, it's an honor and pleasure to be on your show, and I look forward to uh, watching future episodes of your awesome. show. Okay. Thank you again. And thank you again, guys, for tuning in. Take care.